Where in the world did this gravekeeper top come from? Because I haven't seen anything like this in a hot second. Don't beg the 33.8% of you, it's 30%, that have not smashed the curve by the subscribe button. Smash it so we can get to 103,000. All right, breakdown for this case tournament from Corey uh, Nawaraki here is very, very interesting. Now on the top end of things here, it looks like a pretty normal day out here. We have two 10 -E synchro variants out here, which that's, like I said, that's a pretty normal day, ladies and gentlemen. When you see the Adventure Synchro Toolbox doing what it does best out here, yeah, that's that's what we normally expect out here. And then we had one Praying Kids variant. Once again, we're going to continue on with that trend of things we've seen here. You use the Adventure Package in tandem with Praying Kids, and you basically pull your opponent out. That's how it works in the modern era Yu-Gi-Oh! Then we had one Flunder in top cut here. All right, that's that's also a pretty normal day out here. Flunder being an anti-meta representation for the format? Okay. It, honestly, just putting M-Pen up and laughing at your opponent feels good. Now, uh, where did these rogue decks come from? We had one Zodiac in top cut. Now, this is not tri Brigade Zodiac. This is Zeus Turbo, ladies and gentlemen, where you turbo down on your opponent and you go straight to the floor, all right? You do all of your Zodiac shenanigans, and you laugh at your opponent. And then, well, you, you pour some board breakers, some recycle engines, and you just stare at your opponent. All right, but this one had a splice of Sky Striker, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit here. We also had a dinosaur player in this top cut as well. I'm guessing that, or I'm happy to see that dinosaurs are not extinct. Pun. And then we had one Eldritch player out here, continuing to grind through the meta. I, I think every time you look at, like, local representations like this, you always do continue to see Eldritch doing well. And then we had one Gravekeeper player out here, making it all the way into the Grand Finals. And Gravekeepers are one of those decks that you just, you don't see a lot of, ladies and gentlemen. And seeing that it made its way all the way in is nothing short of amazing. Now let's go dig on into those deck lists, shall we? The first list we're gonna be looking at here for this breakdown is none other than Prank Kids Adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody surprised to see that Prank Kids Adventure won this event? Because I am not. This has been, this was what, the highest represented deck at the YCS in terms of just representation was Prank Kids. The fact that like most of the player bases deemed this to be the go-to engine, even with Meow Meow at one at this point in time, this deck is still crazy for what it wants to do, ladies and gentlemen. Do not underestimate the power of praying kids with an adventurer package. So I think an Omni is really good. I see in here that that Splash of Mystic Mine looks like it comes up. If your opponent starts to do anything to generate here, you can just quickly slap down the no button and basically just force the game to slow way down in your favor. And I think we haven't had a lot of Mystic Mine interactions in this format. So to see that a tournament like this got the chance to see more is interesting. Next up here is second place, which is 10 Ye Synchro. Once again, the second most dominating deck in the format here. The fact that Synchro Package is so free for this deck. The fact that you get to set up, once again, it's the same thing with the Praying Kids right here. You set up these Omni Negates through Griffin Rider. You have hand traps out your butt here. You have Fairy Tale Snow for recurability slash dropping off the shooting riser dragon. All right, you have access to Aurora Dawn plays. All right, like this deck is a crazy threat for the modern era Yu-Gi-Oh! And if you don't know how to play against this, I say this all the time, if you're caught with your pants down, you're going to lose, ladies and gentlemen. But in terms of consistency all across the board here, this deck is one of the easiest, I would say, to really get the chance to play. So kudos for getting second place out here. It's nothing to scoff at, but as you can see here, both of the top meta contenders for this event we're both, well, meta contenders, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next up here is third place. Flanderies made it all the way in to third. Now, the interesting thing with this is, is uh, we don't have Prosperities in here. Okay, so that's a little bit of a good news here. You don't need to go spend large amounts of money. I think the most expensive thing in this main deck is the Mega Ryza. Honestly, because the Feather Storms are, what, five, six bucks, and pens are what, like tens, uh, shifters are five bucks. This main deck is not that expensive. I think the most expensive thing you're gonna start to get down to will be like the extra deck down here with like Zeus's and stuff, but you could pretty much budget out 
and not worry about that. But you have a relatively non-expensive main deck here, um, showing that, hey, budget players, you can get away with some things. You know, you can sculpt up and do what you need to do, but you're really paying for, like, those extra resources. And, of course, when you get down there into that side deck, holy crap, those lightning storms and those cross-out designators. You gotta love the fact that you get the duality of this format in terms of numbers. Next up here is the fourth place Zodiac list. Now, what I find interesting about this is we've actually kind of extended out the Sky Striker package for this variant. I know a lot of players look at this deck or have looked at this deck in the past. You know, we were playing Eagle Boosters and things like that. Well, this build said, you know what? I want to take advantage of doing things with my ray. I want to be able to get back an eagle booster or something. So your trade-off here is if you need to clear out the uh, monster you, and your main monster, you can go into the Zeke, you can go down into Shizuku, but this deck gives you different lines of play, which is absolutely kind of cool at the end of the day. We also have the Mystic Mines in here. We got, Of course, we always have to have the oh shit button. If something goes wrong, you slam it on the table and you laugh at your opponent, ladies and gentlemen. That's just how it works, all right? I do find it very weird to see how they splashed up their zoo package, but I do I do think for the most part here that one Zeus resolving wins you the game. Next up here is fifth place, Dinosaurs. Hey, you know what? This, this is a list that says you don't need drop it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're main decking token collector. I have noticed that a lot of players uh, that are playing dinosaurs this format have gone down the path of playing token collector. There's just something about token collector in the main deck for dinosaur players. It's just, it's free resource management at this point in time. It's almost like they have to have that extra body so that they can actually do something. And as much as I want to say that, you know, dinosaurs aren't necessarily a powerhouse this format, um, they are pretty much still underneath the rest of the rogue category here. And seeing that dinosaurs had not a great showing in top four, they were still able to make it into top eight. Um, okay, I, I understand here, but good news is, hey, something out here is functionally playing Dark Ruler no more and getting away with it. Next up here is Eldritch. All right, so we are playing the Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer package in our list. We're playing two copies of Reveal and Protect All My Back Row. Only two Golden Lords. In a scenario like this, I understand why two is better than three, because you have the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer package as your backbone for this strategy. And of course, you have the best card ever in existence for this deck. You have Triple Set 3, Laugh at Your Opponent as you skill drain the entire field. Uh, double Solemn Judgment in the main deck is a little bit weird to me. I'm not a super big fan of that, but... All right, outside of the rest of the general construction for this deck, one Torrential Tribute feels a little bit weird to me, but I feel like just general options across the board here for a list that this is okay. If you're somebody out here who wants to play Eldritch, I think you can get some inspiration from this. By the way, one Cosmic Cyclone, one Harpy's Feather Duster. They really loved these weird ratios, ladies and gentlemen. Next up here is another, oh, this is Sword Soul. Ah, Sword Soul at its best. All right, so we are doing Sword Soul shenanigans here, but we're playing Breakthrough Skill in terms of things, okay. Not too bad, I suppose. Um, we have Triple Ready Fusion. All right, so this duelist wanted to really, really, really switch things up here and give a nice little, I guess, variant shift to some of these ideas. The fact that this deck did make it into this, we, hold on, we even got Royal Decree down here in the side deck and we're citing Senshin. Huh, this is really weird. All of these ratios scream to me. We have Ghost Ogres as our hand trap of choice for this deck. Huh. The, I, you know what? It worked out. I don't think I would see myself playing a variant like this, to be honest with you guys. But you know what? It looks like it worked out, so we can't scoff at it too much. And the last one we have for you guys here is Gravekeepers. Now, I am really shocked to see that we did not maximize on Royal Tribute. That's the first thing I want to point out here. But this deck 
when left to its devices, can get some free wins. So we are playing the Dragoon package in here. So check, we have generic boss monster. I see that we have two Royal Tributes, two goes and two evenly. Evenly can get some free games. I also find it interesting that we only have one copy of TC Boo in here. Okay, one Prosperity, one Car Demise. I mean, Demise is pretty much free draw power in here. It just sucks, like, if you see your bricks like Dark Magician and Red Eyes. Um, outside of that, Imperms and other useful good stuff cards. Really like the side deck is just useful good stuff. All right, there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at the end of the day. But ladies and gentlemen, Gravekeepers came through and actually took down a top eight finish nonetheless. So guys, what do you think? Please leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more awesome content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.